Hey guys, John here from Sonic Drive Studio. Thanks for tuning in. So I guess this is my first official gear review slash demo from the new studio, huh? I'm excited. So I feel like I'm finally getting started over here. Everything has been finished and everything has been fine-tuned, so I hope I'm all done with that now. Today is a very windy day outside and since this studio is in my attic, there's a chance that some of that wind noise will come across in the video, so my apologies for that in advance. Anyway, so today we're taking a look at something very cool that I've been anticipating for quite a while, and that is the Two Notes Captor X Reactive Load Virtual Cabinet Attenuator and IR Loader. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you're probably aware that I've been using my trusty Fractal Audio LB2 reactive load box for most of my amplifier videos. And while it's a very solid reactive load, it's not capable of doing a whole lot more than just providing a load for my amps. This Captor X from Two Notes, on the other hand, is capable of doing so much more. So this is a very welcome addition to this studio. So needless to say, I'm very excited about this thing and I can't wait to show you guys what this thing is capable of. So what exactly is this thing capable of? Well, first of all, obviously this thing functions as a reactive load box for your amplifiers. If you're not sure what a reactive load box is, let me try and explain that to you in a very simple way. Normally a guitar tube amplifier needs a cabinet connected to it so that the signal of the amplifier can be loaded down into that cabinet. Otherwise the amplifier will very likely break. Now, if you want to use your amplifier without an actual cabinet for things like silent recording and stuff like that, you can replace the cabinet with a load box and the load box is designed to catch the load of the amplifier just as an actual speaker would. And then you can send the signal or DI output from the load box into your DAW or effects processor without damaging the amp. A reactive load box takes that one step further because it emulates the interaction that occurs between a tube amplifier and a cabinet. It's a bit technical, but that interaction basically has an effect on the feel and sound of a tube amplifier. In short, a good reactive load box is supposed to make your amp sound as if it's really attached to a real cabinet. And then, since there are no guitar speakers attached to the amplifier anymore, which do have a huge impact on the sound, you're going to have to emulate the sound of speakers. And that's where the speaker emulator and IR loader come into play. Now the Captor X can also function as a simple attenuator. So you can place this in between your amplifier and your real cabinet, and this will help you to attenuate the signal. This means that you can basically crank up your amplifier, but with less volume. A pretty handy feature to also have indeed. Now this awesome device is capable of so much more, and I'm gonna do my best to touch on most of those things in this video. And I'm gonna do that by demonstrating how this device would fit into my workflow. So we're gonna listen to some music and some riffs, and then I'm gonna show you what settings I use to achieve the tones with this unit. Now, before we get into the music, let's take a look at some of the main features that really stood out to me personally. There are already a bunch of videos out there that explain the features of this unit in great detail. So I just wanna show you guys how I would use this thing and which features I would use, which is most of them, surprisingly, so that's very cool. The Captor X has this very nice and sturdy metal housing, which feels very solid and it looks kinda of cool too and you can connect it to your computer via USB. This means that you can control all the parameters on this unit via the Two Notes Torpedo remote software. This is not only handy for controlling all the parameters, but you can also use that to update the firmware and upload your own impulse responses to the unit. Now I have used it that way and that's very great, but what's really amazing and mind-blowing to me is that you can also control the Captor X wirelessly with your phone or tablet with the wireless app. Now that's a groundbreaking feature if you ask me. That's just so convenient and handy. Man, that's awesome. So as soon as I got my phone hooked up to this, I just went that route all the way because it's just way too convenient. A very great feature indeed, so I'm very impressed by that. The phone app basically allows you to control everything in this unit. You can change the cabs, you can change the mics, the mic types, you can add your own impulse responses, you can add EQ and reverb and all sorts of good stuff like that but one of the most handy features in my opinion for a load box is the built-in noise gate. I know a very simple feature, but very essential for a piece of gear like this. And it's not just a simple noise gate, it also has a very handy learn feature that can help you to detect the amount of noise that you need to kill. So that's an awesome feature indeed, not to mention stuff like the twin tracker. So this thing has a lot to offer. So for these demonstrations, I exclusively used my phone to control the features of this unit, and I'm very pleased overall at how smoothly all of that worked. 
Now in this video, I'm just gonna use the cabinets that come in this unit. But of course, I'm also dying to find out how this thing sounds with my own hammer impulse responses. So stay tuned for that in future videos. It allows you to load impulse responses with a maximum length of 200 milliseconds. So that's not bad at all. It also allows you to store your IRs with a shorter length and that gives you a little bit less latency basically. And it also allows you to store more impulse responses into this thing. So that's just something to keep in mind when you want to store your own impulse responses into this unit. Okay, now let's get started with the first musical segment. It's a heavy rock clip. And for this clip, I'm using my ESP LTD Phoenix 1000, uh, which is easily one of my all time favorite guitars. It's just an amazing guitar. And I'm very excited to finally show you guys that guitar in action. And that guitar is going through my Engel Fireball 100 tube amplifier. It's an amazing amplifier and it's great for high gain rock and metal. It's a very solid 100 watt amplifier with plenty of gain on tap. Now the speaker out of the amplifier is being fed into the Captor X and the signal from the Captor X is being fed into my DAW via two XLR cables. There's no post-processing applied in the DAW aside from a simple low cut at around 70 or 80 Hertz. Now let's go ahead and take a listen. And then after that, I'll show you the settings that I use to achieve these tones. Here we go. Great, so for the cab tones, I went with the ANGL or Angle Vint C cabinet, which is based on a 4x12 angle cabinet with V30s in it. A nice and fitting cabinet for an angle amp, I would say. I'm using two microphones on this cab. I'm using the Ribbon 121 and a Dynamic 57 microphone blended together. The Ribbon 121 is there for the body and the thickness, and the Dynamic 57 takes care of the open top end and the 57 is set about five decibels lower than the 121. So I kind of balanced those out with the built-in mixer. And both mics aren't 100% on axis, as that helps to smoothen out the top end a little bit and make them sound a little bit more round. And then of course, I also have the awesome noise gate enabled, very handy indeed. A small detail that I really enjoy about the phone app is that there is metering at the bottom of the screen that shows the metering in real time. So that's a very handy feature to have. And then I also have some very subtle room reverb going on in the post effects section. No EQ, enhancer or twin tracker enabled this time around. So that's it basically. Now let's check out some beautiful ambient clean tones also with my ESP LTD Phoenix. This time the guitar is set to the middle position with the coil split on the bridge pickup enabled. And this time I'm going through my orange TH30H amplifier, an amp that is known for its beautiful and chimey clean tones. I have it set so that it's just on the verge of breakup. Let's take a listen.
Okay, that sounded pretty great, huh? All the processing that you heard came from the Captor X. This time I used the Tanger 30C cabinet, which is based on a vintage orange cabinet loaded with G12Hs. Again, a fitting match for this orange amplifier, of course. For the first mic, I used the Ribbon 121 mic again, also a little bit off axis. And then for the second mic, instead of using the 57 Dynamic, I used the Condenser 87 this time around. And that mic is basically a little bit warmer sounding than the Dynamic 57, and I've also set that mic a little bit off axis. The noise gate is also turned on, but that's not doing a lot because of the clean tone, of course. And I've added some very nice and lush plate reverb in the post effects section, so that sounds really nice. And then halfway the song, I switched on the Twin Tracker feature, which is very cool. And that gives the guitar a very wide stereo spread, so it basically emulates that you double track the guitar. So that can be a great feature for when you're the only guitar player in a band, for example. It can make you sound huge on stage. Now let's check out the final tones of this demonstration, and that will be a classic crunch tones with my Gibson Les Paul through my Marshall JCM 800 Studio or SC20H. Let's check that out right now. Okay, for these tones I'm using the Vint C cabinet, which is based on a Marshall 4x12 cabinet. I'm using the same mic combination as before, so the Ribbon 121 with the Condenser 87. So similar settings there, also with the noise gate enabled to kill some noise. And for this tone I felt like I needed to add a little bit more body and weight to the guitar tone, so this time I added the Enhancer effect in the post effects section. Pretty cool what that did to the sound. And then of course I also added some simple room reverb again. And that's basically it. So overall, I'm very impressed with this unit. If you need a reactive load box that is capable of doing a whole lot, you definitely need to check this one out. I can think of many situations where this will prove to be a very powerful tool. I'm also going to compare the basic reactive load functions of this thing to my Fractal Audio LB2 very soon on this channel, so stay tuned for that. It could be pretty interesting to see how those two units differ in tone, so can't wait to try that out. And you'll also get to hear the Captor X with Ownhammer impulse responses loaded into it on the channel very soon. I can't wait to check that out as well. I think one of the advantages of that is that it won't require a whole lot of tweaking since I usually like to use the Ownhammer pre-made mic mixes. Sometimes with the Captor X it's easy to kind of get lost with all the settings and the features and the tweaking. So that definitely is something to keep in mind with this. It's not a very simple device. So just be sure to only use all the features when you really need them. But yeah, loading in the Ownhammer impulse responses will make my personal workflow a bit faster indeed, especially since I'm so used to those files and how they sound. Tools like the noise gate and the room reverb will definitely get a lot of usage though, so I'm sure of that. But all of that is very personal, so that can be... But all of that is very personal, of course, so it could be very different for you. But that's the beauty of this thing. It has all these great features that you can use the features that work for you. So color me impressed. Check out the Captor X by Two Notes and I'm sure you will be impressed as well. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to drop a comment down below and a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please also hit the subscribe button along with the bell to stay up to date. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!